professor, physician, epidemiologist. I am Dr. Sri Banerjee. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Sri Banerjee, core faculty for the College of Health Sciences and Public Policy at Walden University. And in this video, um, what I'll be going over is the intention to treat principle. Very important in randomized control trials. Um, I think we don't do um, a, a very good job of um, really going over a lot of these trials. Um, there's a lot of um, uh, important measures that are um, and, and important principles um, especially principles to understand um, when we're thinking about our randomized control trials. Um, and, and the idea is simple. The idea is simply this. The method for analyzing results in a prospective randomized study where all participants were randomized are included in this statistical analysis and analyzed according to the group they were originally assigned. So th this, is, this is the important part. According to the group they were originally, originally assigned. Regardless of what treatment they received. Um, so whatever group they were assigned, um, it doesn't matter, uh, you know, um, e even if the, the treatment is different. So um, th there was actually uh, within the content of the paper, if you um, look further, um, this is an interesting paper, um, they go through a um, scenario, uh, a hypothetical scenario, um, where they have a starting point um, of randomization um, to A and B, um, and then there's a surgical arm, um, and then a, uh, and then a, 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 um, um, a, a placebo arm. Um, so um, in the surgical arm, there was medical management and surgery, and then and um, B was medical management. Um, very important um, already because. Um, one is intention to treat um, arm, and one is per protocol um, arm. So um, let's take a look at what happened, um, what the results were. Um, so when, if, if basically the idea here is that if we were um, to do a per protocol analysis rather than a intention to treat analysis how would it be different so per protocol analysis um, would result in a relative risk of uh, 0.59 um, and you would have to do the math of course um, because uh, you would have to first measure um, kind of the percentage the risk in the control group um, basically the risk of death in the control group um, versus the treatment group, um, or the treatment group versus the control group. Um, and so if you did that, then the risk of death in the treatment group was 18%. Um, and for the control group was 30%. Um, so that means that th there is some effectiveness, um, but doing doing the math, um, it's actually um, that. So the, it, there would be a forty one percent reduction in death, um, according to that analysis. But um, and if we did that, um, did this in a per, per protocol analysis, um, this would be a spurious and inaccurate. Um, conclusion from this. So the 41% would be an inaccurate um, conclusion when compared to conventional therapy. Um, because, and this was discussed before actually, um, in, in reality the truth was that the surgical intervention did not have a beneficial effect. Um, the patients in group B have a similar outcome. 30 total patients have died at the 12 month follow up. Of these 30, 15 died within three weeks after enrollment, and the remaining 15 died uh, between six weeks and 12 months. Um, 
so there, there's there's really no true um, benefit to the treatment to the medical management plus surgery arm. Um, so the illustration here, um, continuing onward, um, is that um, this is a biased in, um, uh, misinterpretation of the effectiveness of the treatment. Um, and so what is the right way to do this? You might be asking or, uh, asking the question. Um, so the intention to treat analysis analyzes the patients according to the groups to which they were originally assigned. Um, so the what you would basically do in this example, the risk of death for the um, intervention group is 30%, right? So using this method of analysis, the 15 patients who died um, before they were to um, get the intervention are included in the calculation. So uh, basically for the control group, the risk would be 30%. So then um, if you were to do a relative risk, um, basically there would be no benefit. Um, so the ratio would be one. Um, and the relative risk reduction is zero. So analyzing the data according to the intention to treat principle uh, concludes that the surgical intervention does not work. Um, so the diff I, I, I hope this makes sense in terms of um, what the difference was um, in the way this was calculated. So let's take a step back and um, do some meta thinking here um, and um, compare per protocol analysis <clears throat> to um, the intention to treat analysis and what the difference is. Um, there is such a thing called um, this prognostic balance um, that exists. So um, in terms of um, similar types of patients um, being there um, and um, the prognostic balance not to disturb that, um, that is the reason that the intention to treat analysis is more important than per protocol analysis. Because what's happening here is that in the intention to treat analysis, the reason you have in the intervention group a higher percentage, 30%, compared to the per protocol analysis um, is because you're in, uh, including the individuals who died before they were to get the intervention. So in the per protocol analysis was individuals who um, were only considered after the protocol started, um, but the intention to treat um, analysis was, um, so intention to treat analysis was uh, before the protocol was started, and then the per protocol was after the um, protocol was started, after the intervention protocol was started. Um, so that's the difference. Um, so um, looking for now, just uh, just finalizing everything and um, taking a look at why um, there might be some bias introduced here and what are some of the strengths and weaknesses. Um, so when we're looking at the um, intention to treat principles, right? Um, so adherence comes to question um, and the level of adherence to um, the instructions of the um, of the protocol um, there's such a thing called um, the healthy adherer effect so if you've heard heard the um, idea it's the idea that the individuals who are adhering may be in some ways more healthy um, than individuals that are not adhering um, so it's really important um, just to even minimize some of these biases um, and so that we don't disturb that prognostic sort of balance that exists, um, that um, we look at the um, intention to treat analysis more closely. 
and so um hope hope that this video makes sense um on um, what how the intention to treat analysis is different than a per protocol analysis in a clinical trial thank you for listening